Welcome. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the Canna Kit Raspberry Pi 4 Starter Kit. And if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to this in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link in the description to my Raspberry Pi playlist on YouTube, and you'll find other videos I've done on the Raspberry Pi. So let's get this open. So you can buy the Raspberry Pi just by itself. This comes with everything you need except a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So it's read me first. Okay, so this is saying ensure you connect the HDMI cable to HDMI 0, the port nearest the USB-C port. Uh, make sure you're using the correct version of Noobs. So you don't want to use a Raspberry Pi 3 software on this. It says don't insert the micro SD card until you have the case assembled. It says there's a video you can watch at this uh, address. And it says don't insert the micro SD card in a USB card reader uh, and then connect it to the board. This tells us they have free customer support. On the back we have the uh, GPIO uh, pinouts. So that's very cool. So this is a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. So the previous Raspberry Pis had full size HDMI. This one uses the micro HDMI. Okay, so this is the micro SD card it comes with. It's a Samsung 32 gig Evo Plus. Here's the case. There's a lot of ventilation on this case. There's holes all over it. Here's the Raspberry Pi itself. It's a safety guide. I think this is read the instructions, grab it by the edges. Don't let it uh, get too hot or cold. Uh, watch for a static discharge. I think it's saying place this way up and there's the website. So I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 here. So let's see if I can hold these at the same time. There we go. So the difference is here. Well, I didn't realize the uh, Ethernet's on the other side, huh? I wasn't expecting that. But uh, this has four USB 2 ports. This has two that are USB 2 and two that are USB 3. This has gigabit Ethernet. This had 100 megabit. I think this model had 100. Yeah, because the B Plus had gigabit. Um, has GPIO on it. This is PoE for power over Ethernet right there. It has the audio jack that has video in it too. Here we are. So we have the two micro HDMI ports. We have USB-C and the old one had the HDMI power and audio. They both have the uh, camera and display connectors here and we have the processors here. So this is an old Raspberry Pi. Actually, this is a Raspberry Pi 2 case. Doesn't quite fit in the old case. It almost does, but not quite. So this peels off of here. We should be able to set this in. You're gonna see a little slot for the micro SD card. You wanna make sure that there's no card in it when you insert this. That's just gonna set there. I think this top will pop off. There we go. We can slide the whole thing together. So there's neat graphics on here. It has USB and network, uh, micro SD, USB-C, HDMI 0, HDMI 1, and AV. And there's little uh, kind of foam feet on the bottom. They're not super grippy, but. So this came with a fan. Now a fan isn't required, but it seems like people are really recommending it so it doesn't thermally throttle. So this is an inline on off switch. It has USB-C on both sides. This is a uh, card reader. So you could use that to put it in a computer. And this is the quick start guide, which maybe I should read before I make the video, but I'm not going to. So, <laughs> so this is the power supply. This is actually kind of heavy. I don't, I don't know how well this is gonna show up here, but this is my previous Raspberry Pi power supply. It outputs 5.25 volts at 2.4 amps. And this is the new one. And this outputs 5.1 volts at 3.5 amps. So this is a little bit beefier power supply. And this has USB-C, and this one has micro USB. The cord is a lot thicker on this USB-C power supply too. So one of the reasons I got this kit is because it came with the fan, the heat sinks, and the power supply. So I knew everything was gonna to work together. And I'm fully capable of buying all the, everything separate. This was just the easy route to do it. And it looks like it came with a pretty decent micro SD card. Okay, so I have the heat sinks here. I'm gonna pull off the blue backing. 
This one's going to go on the processor. There, I'm going to press it down. You want to make sure you don't press it so hard you break the board. The next one's going to go on this chip, which I think is the RAM. This last one I think is USB, which is right here. Okay, so I have all those on. Next, I'll prepare the fan for installation. So I'll put the case back on like that. This is going to install like so. This is going to plug in the GPIO. So I want the fan facing away like that. Let me see if I can. So if I peel this back, I put the wires on this corner. I think that'll reach. If we look at our little chart here, we see that uh, ground is the third one over and the second one over is five volts. So I should be able to plug those in here. There we go. And then I'll clip this in place. So now we have the fan blowing out the little Raspberry Pi logo. Okay, so I'm going to plug this into my monitor and keyboard and we'll take a look at it. This has noobs on it, so we should be able to install the system right from the card. I'll slide that in here. Okay, so this does not click in, it's just friction. So use your thumbnail to get it out. Okay, I was trying screen capture here, but I couldn't seem to get to work, so I'm just gonna film my monitor for now. So we have noobs in here that comes with noobs, and you can select Raspbian Full or Libra Elect. So I'll do Raspbian Full. And then down at the bottom it says Language. I'm going to choose English US, because that's where I'm at, and Keyboard US. Next I'll click Install in the upper left. It says, warning this will install the selected operating systems. All existing data on the drive will be overwritten, including any OSs that are already installed. I'll click yes. And now it's writing the partition. Okay, that's finished. It took about 14 minutes, I think. So I'll click OK. It's going to restart. Okay, my screen capture is working now, so I'll switch over to that system. So it says, Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. I'll click Next. So Noob's already asked me what country I'm in, but it's asking me again, so I'll switch to the United States. I want language American English. I want time zone to be Chicago. And I'll check Use English Language and Use US Keyboard. I'll click Next. It wants me to give it a new password. So if you're new to Raspberry Pi, the default username is Pi, and the default password is Raspberry. I'll click Next. It's looking for Wi-Fi networks. It's asking to update the software. I'm going to skip that for now. And then it's asking to restart, so I'll restart it. Okay, so the interface is up now, so let's open up a web browser. So we have Chromium here. It says Flash Player. Huh. Not many things use Flash anymore. I'll open up my website, see how fast that opens. It took a little bit of time. Let's click on the video and see if that plays. I'm going to talk about setting up a Raspberry Pi as like close this, and now I'll add this to a file. Of course, there's not a lot of action this in this video, so that's not the best example. System D. <laughs> Let me open up like a news website.
So it's hard to compare that to another computer. I'm going to make another video where I say compare this to other desktops and I'll show it side by side. But it did open, it opened fairly quickly. So in the future we'll see that this was when the coronavirus was going on. <laughs> I think 2020 will be remembered for that. So this is standard Raspberry Pi at this point. So I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this is the four gig version. So this has more memory than the other uh, Raspberry Pis. So you should be able to open multiple applications at the same time better than this. So like we can open up LibreOffice Calc, we can open up the web browser. I'll open up uh, Writer. So we have tabs up here for each one. And we can switch between them relatively quickly. So I plan on making some more in-depth videos on this Raspberry Pi 4. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.